Hello everybody! Last week we introduced the round elimination technique, but we didn't yet see that many exciting applications of it. We showed that some problems require, for example, at least two rounds. But usually we care about asymptotics, not so much about constants. Now we will get to the real applications of the round elimination technique. One of the highlights is this. With round elimination, we can prove that a problem called sinkless orientation cannot be solved fast. For example, if you look at the deterministic port numbering model, then it is not possible to solve it faster than in logarithmic time. And this result has got tons of consequences. Many other problems are known to be at least as hard to solve as synchronous orientation. And this idea is also guiding us when we define the synchronous orientation problem. We want to make it as simple as possible so that it can be reduced to many other problems. And then, once we show that synchronous orientation is hard, we know that all these other problems are hard as well. So let's now first define the synchronous orientation problem. It's enough for now to consider three regular trees, in which all nodes have a degree 1 or 3. And just like last week, we assume that the nodes are split in two classes, active and passive. So we have a two coloring of the tree. And the problem is simply this. Orient the edges so that all degree 3 nodes have at least one outgoing edge. So this is good, and so is this. But this is wrong. We have got here a node that doesn't have any outgoing edges. Now, this problem is easy to solve in logarithmic time. Basically, within logarithmic distance, there has to be at least one leaf node. And if everyone points towards the nearest leaf node, we get a synchronous orientation. But the interesting thing is that this is the best that you can do. We will show it this week for deterministic algorithms in the board numbering model. But one can use similar ideas to show that the same problem is hard to solve also in the local model and also for randomized algorithms. Now, why does that matter? It turns out that many relevant problems are at least as hard as the synchronous orientation problem. Let's give just one simple example. Let's look at graph coloring. We already know that if you have a graph of maximum degree 2, that is a part or cycle, then vertex coloring with three colors can be done fast in the local model, while coloring with two colors is much harder. Now, what happens if you look at for example, graphs of maximum degree 4. Again, we know that vertex coloring with 5 colors can be done fast. Remember that this is delta plus 1 coloring, something we learned to do fast in week 4 of this course. But is this the best that we can do? Could we also find a 4 coloring fast? Well, if you could find a 4 coloring of vertices in graphs of maximum degree 4, we can also find a four coloring of edges in three regular trees, like this. Take a three regular tree, switch to the line graph. Edges become nodes, and adjacent edges become adjacent nodes. This is a graph of degree at most 4. So we can find a four coloring of the vertices. And this will directly give a four coloring of the edges of the original tree. But now this is something we could use to find a synchronous orientation. Let's put back active and passive nodes here, and then just pick two colors, like orange and blue, and orient them away from the active nodes. And orient the remaining two color classes towards the active nodes. Note that degree 3 nodes were incident to at least one of orange and blue, 
and at least one of green and black. So they got at least one outgoing edge. So it's a synchronous orientation. So if we now know that synchronous orientation is hard to solve, we also know that edge coloring of three regular trees with four colors has to be hard to solve. And therefore, for coloring, the vertices in graphs of maximum degree 4 has to be also hard to solve. And this is exactly what we wanted to know. Now, how do we show that synchronous orientation is a hard problem? We apply the round elimination technique familiar from the previous week. Remember that round elimination turns a given problem to another problem that can be solved exactly one round faster. But if you do this repeatedly, starting from the synchronous orientation problem, you will quickly reach a fixed point. You get a contradiction. The output problem can be solved exactly one round faster than itself, which is clearly a contradiction. And the only escape is that round elimination fails here. And why would it fail? It turns out that the only possibility is that this problem cannot be solved fast. And hence, synchronous orientation cannot be solved fast either.